Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. It is 930, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, I just want to thank everyone for joining us today, and we're so excited to be showing this, uh, sharing this presentation with you. So just getting started, we want to help you guys get the most out of this webinar. So we do encourage you guys to take as many notes as you can. However, if you miss anything, don't stress about it because we will be sending out the presentation and the recorded webinar out after um, later this afternoon to to everyone. If you guys need any help during this presentation, there is a little button where you can raise your hand. Um, if you click on that, that will let us know that there's something wrong and we will reach out to you directly. And then during the webinar, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. There is a questions tab on your control panel. If you click the down arrow, you will be able to type the questions. Um, we will be having a live Q&A after the webinar is over and we will answer as many questions as we can. So joining us today, we've got um, a lot of people. We've got Jeff Hammond, who is our VP of Technical Services, Mallory Phoney, Marketing Director. We've got Tim Wright, VP of Sales, Ed Davis, Residential Sales Manager, myself as a moderator, Steve Smith, CEO and President, Dan Jackson, VP of Operations, and Brian Staley, Assistant Product Manager. Everyone um, who you see right now will be joining us for the live uh, questions after. So if you do have any questions directed towards them, please just go ahead and type it in in the questions panel and we will get those answered. So getting started, we just wanted to give a brief agenda. We wanna help set the stage for everyone to understand what's going on today and what we're wanting to present about. Um, we will go over the Advantage system that I know all of you guys are here for, as well as the product features, performance data, field installations, um, our next steps, and after that, the Q&A. And like I said, if you guys need any help during the presentation, please raise your hand and please ask as many questions as you can. So passing this over to Mallory, our marketing director. Good morning, everyone. Can you guys hear me okay? Nodding heads. <laughs> All right, so um, to kick things off, just setting the stage with you know how we got to where we are today. Um, you guys probably know you know the brief history of air to water heat pumps. Um, to start out with, you know air to air was really kind of where the focus was, but unfortunately they really struggled. Those early generation did with extreme cold temperatures. Um, but luckily, advances in technologies have allowed for air source heat pumps to perform better in those cold temperatures, um, and really kind of well not kind of you know, really gain uh, market adoption within the US. So that's kind of looking directly at air to air systems. Luckily for us, those same advances have applied to air to water heat pumps as well. And a bit of a spoiler alert for what you guys will find out later, some of those air to water heat pumps include vapor injection and variable speed technology for even further advances. Carly, next slide, <laughs> sorry. Um, and then, you know, to kind of dive in a little bit more. so. You know, we've kind of established that air to air heat pumps, you know, have really elevated the game within the US, um, but air to water heat pumps are very well established in Europe and China. Uh, there's a global market of about 1.7 million units sold a year within the last year. So that's anticipated to continue moving forward and uh, upward in trajectory. Right now within the US, the only real alternative uh, prior to air to water were boilers. So there was really no good electric choice. Next slide. So you see here energy independence, um, other buzzwords like net zero, electrification, um, clean energy. These are all buzzwords that are gaining with a lot of traction right now. So, you know, and in the US specifically and in Canada and North America in general, in the world, <laughs> um, people are focusing on the reduction of emissions. Um, we've gotten to slide like what seven or eight here, and uh, we haven't brought up COVID yet. But you know, no surprise, with the current environment, people are really starting to focus on how does my home and building impact my health. Um, you know, things like allergies, viruses. Uh, we have listed here hypertension, um, asthma, all of those different things. You know, our environment plays a huge role in how we kind of in how we function as humans. Um, so people are already before this, you know, we're looking at how do homes and buildings impact me and moving forward, that's even going to be a stronger indication as to how do I get into an all electric space that's clean, um, that doesn't use as much, you know, fossil fuel 
So that's something that's just going to continue moving upward. Um, you couple that with the fact that many countries, states, provinces, um, you know, even down to different counties uh, within states are really working hard to eliminate climate emissions. Uh, we've listed a few states here. Uh, this is only just, you know, a very small handful. I think I read that well over 25 states have pretty aggressive climate um, emission goals that they would like to hit uh, by 2030, 2025, 2050. Uh, so you see here that Colorado would like to uh, lower their pollution levels by 50% by 2030. North Carolina, 40% by 2025. They don't have you know, very much time to do that. Pennsylvania, 26% by 2025. And New York, 80% by 2050. This product that we're going to discuss today specifically, you know, will have a huge adoption in New York just based off of the fact that it is all electric, um, that, you know, the work that NYSERDA is doing there, uh, lots of great things coming out of that state that I think will uh, will really, you know, set the tone for the rest of the country and, and North America as well. Next slide. So here we dive into your opportunity. Um, you know, specifically for HVAC installers, um, for people just within the space, builders, architects, engineers, um, those who are just thought leaders with, you know, within the HVAC space, this is your chance to be on the leading edge of electrification, particularly in North America. Like I said, you know, air to water heat pumps, they're very well established in Europe, China, um, but here they haven't quite gotten that traction just yet. Uh, mostly because there wasn't a full service solution available. Uh, so this is, like I said, really just your opportunity to be on the leading edge of electrification of net zero living. Um, this is your opportunity to expand your expertise and gain market share before the space is flooded. You know, I know uh, one of the things that I frequently would hear from customers is that when the geothermal tax credit came around, that you know a lot of installers jumped on the geothermal bandwagon. They maybe weren't as reliable. They maybe weren't as, you know, uh, quality, high quality of work, all of those different things. So essentially this is your opportunity to, to create the bandwagon. You get to be the one that really makes your footprint in the space before everyone else jumps on board and starts installing this product as well. You know, really establish your expertise within the air to water space and furthermore within, you know, the electrification space, a clean energy home. Um, so we kind of describe this product as a super accessible whole home and building solution. You know, there are instances where other HVAC technologies won't work because of this or that, so, you know, different, different ordinances, uh, different reasons, lack of space, all kinds of reasons. Um, and this product could be the solution uh, to that accessible whole home and building uh, all electric solution for lack of a better term uh, but also you know kind of we'll we'll be diving into this later don't you know be concerned if you do have a job where it makes sense to include fossil fuels you know maybe the home or building owner still still has really great incentives in their area uh, this product that we're going to discuss has a solution for that too and i'll let steve dive in a little bit more here to uh to your opportunity i think you might be muted steve I was, thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Um, as Mallory mentioned earlier, the, you know, the, you know, there's so many uh, in North America, there's so many, you know, again, either states, you know, provinces, or, you know, even uh, local governments that are phasing out fossil fuels and they are, they are very uh, aggressive uh, timelines. And so, um, you know, thinking back, um, it, when, when Entertech started in 1996, um, you know, Intertech, energy and technology. And so I, I would like to think that I was forward thinking 25 years and knew this was coming, that the world would be turning to all electric, but I, I really can't take credit for that. I was, I was already biased towards, towards uh, electric products as, uh, as working in the utility side of the, of the business. And so um, I, I already had that bias, but anyhow, in all seriousness, the world is trending towards you know all electric products you see it in everyday living and so we we feel that that entertech and you are partners we are poised to take advantage of that and we're, we're not backing off any of our our passion on geothermal and water source that's staying just as strong we're just widening our path as we move forward and offering you know other technologies 
Um, we also added in, which we'll talk about here just a little bit, but we, uh, this is focusing on the air to water, but we also added solar products because again, the world where the world is trending, we want to be out in front of it. We want to get you out in front of it. So that, that is our goal. And as I, as I uh, finish up here, uh, I would like to thank our, our parent company, Neba in Sweden, for giving us so, you know, so much assistance and help on this product. This product is new to us here in the US, but it has been, it has been in use in Europe for a number of years. And Dan and his uh, engineering team were able to bring it to the US. It's, it's pretty much a different product than, you know, on the inside, but it, it uh, you know, it has a great foundation coming from, from Europe. So thanks to our partners in, in, in Sweden and to help us do this. So again, uh, we, uh, we look forward to uh, finishing this presentation and thank you for joining us. And it's a little early, I know it's early in the presentation, but I wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Tim Wright, Vice President of Sales. It's, it's great to have you with us today. Thank you very, very much. All of our Intertech family, our Intertech friends, it's just awesome to have this opportunity. As Steve said, to, we're just showing you how Entertech is widening our path on how we can help head toward electrification and decarbonization. And just wanted to be able to just touch on our tagline or our, our logo, if you will, for this product. I commend our marketing team by choosing the name Advantage because really what this is, it's your advantage. It's our advantage. It's our collective advantage. So Mallory and team, awesome job for choosing that name because it signifies the, the hope that we have with electrification. So as Steve had mentioned, for our Canadian friends and customers and our US friends and customers, this is a new opportunity to really have a three-in-one product, which is absolutely amazing in this market space as we continue to head toward electrification to head toward that net zero type community. As Steve had mentioned solar, with this inverter driven technology, that makes it so much easier to bring in solar PV or battery storage. So just as we unfold this today for you, consider Entertech your family, consider Entertech your partner. And this product here is we're gonna unpack this a little bit more with Jeff Hammond next with more of the technical aspects. I also wanna to highlight too, that we're not leaving out our boiler friends. There's many of you on this call today or on this webinar today that still may be installing boilers. And, and again, you're, you're doing that, that's part of your profession, that's your livelihood. Jeff will share with you that we have not just brought an all electric system, we have brought a dual fuel opportunity to give you more longevity out of your boiler or how this can work in conjunction with your boiler. So Jeff will start and unpack that for us, but to have a system, a complete system, as Mallory said, that will be able to help with all of your radiant floor, as well as your forced air heating and cooling, so that you still can handle all your indoor air quality products. And then again, we say up to 100%. Please understand for normal usage in a home, this unit will do a beautiful job for you. For those that want a, a seven head shower, we'll, we have a plan for you as well. And Jeff will unpack that. But thank you very much for tuning in and, and we're having fun today. This is an exciting opportunity for Entertech and again, for you folks. Thank you. Good morning, Jeff Hammond, Vice President of Technical Services. We'll dig into the technical part of this product just a little bit. Feel free to ask any questions that you may have, and uh, we'll be answering those questions at the end. This slide shows all three components of the system, and what's great about this is it's a, it's a matched system. So there's some unique parts and pieces here on the far left side. The outdoor unit, as Steve mentioned, um, this, is, this is really a NEBA design that we've adapted for the U.S., so the great part about that is we have a lot of R&D already done. The engineering team has done a great job of, of taking that product that's been operating for four plus years in, in Europe and uh, making it a North American product. 
So the outdoor unit has some special features. Uh, we're using a variable speed inverter drive compressor. So now we can operate at much lower temperatures. Uh, it's a, a monoblock design, which means that section in the lower right-hand corner of the outdoor unit is the entire refrigeration circuit. So we're not running any uh, line sets from the outdoor to the indoor. It's much easier for installation, uh, more reliable, and, and certainly uh, a, a quicker installation. So that portion is uh, very similar to, to a product that's already been in use for, for quite some time. The indoor unit, the indoor module in the middle of the picture, is an Intertech design specifically for North America. And this is a huge labor savings. I'll talk about some of the features uh, in, in the next slides, but as you can see from the picture, it has the expansion tank already installed. There's a Grunfoss uh, variable speed pump already inside, zone valves, electric immersion heater, or you can opt for a boiler backup, and instead of the heater, it has uh, a boiler control module. You can also see the uh, large LCD control screen. That's, that's uh, what we call the HMI, human machine interface, and that's a touch screen color uh, display where you can see all of those temperatures and pressures and so forth. The control boards there uh, communicate with the outdoor unit. So this package gives you the uh, complete uh, installation and one or two days of, of labor savings just from having all that piping done. On the far right is the indirect water heater. This is a special water heater that we've been using for quite a while with heat pumps so that it's not new to the air to water technology. As you can see, that big copper coil inside the indirect is unique because it's not like a typical boiler uh, indirect water heater where the boiler water goes through the heat exchanger. In this case, the uh, load water from the heat pump is the storage portion of the water heater, and the potable water actually goes through that copper heat exchanger. So it's more like an indirect water heater. It gives us some advantages in that we can use lower water temperatures, um, which we would. Uh, be able to provide from the heat pump, although it can do up to 135 degree water, so it's not not that low in that regard, but it's also our storage tank when we go into defrost mode. So when we put all these three pieces together, the system now is, is really a matched system. Uh, we're not trying to source parts and pieces uh, from uh, various vendors and hope that they work together because everything is communicating from indoor to outdoor and the outdoor system, the indoor system really is, is just um, uh, telling the outdoor unit what it needs. I need heating, I need cooling, and then the outdoor unit takes over and handles all the defrost um, control, it handles uh, switching from heating to cooling, and reports back uh, all the information to the indoor module. So that's, that's kind of a quick overview of the uh, components. Let's go to the next slide and look at some of the features. The monoblock design, as I mentioned earlier, that's a European term, but essentially it means everything is inside uh, a package unit. So we don't have to worry about refrigerant piping, charging, and we don't have any refrigerant inside the home. That becomes more and more important over time as the industry switches to different refrigerants, that'll be even more important. So this type of a design is, uh, is much more installation friendly. It also allows us to check that unit at our factory in Mitchell, South Dakota. So it gets run tested, just like our geothermal heat pumps. Uh, that's a lot harder to do with the split system. Right now, at least, it's the only available package system in North America. What that means is the indoor module is, is a key part of that. Um, there are other air to water units out there, but they're just the outdoor, uh, the outdoor portion of it. So all of the indoor uh, piping components and so forth has to be done in the field. We think it's about one to two days of labor savings, because what you end up with are just piping connections. So you're piping to the indoor unit from the outdoor, you have your piping to and from the indirect water heater, and out to your hydronic zones, that's really it. Uh, you connect your manifolds and so forth. We've also included the hydronic specialties. So you could see from the picture previously, the expansion tank is included, but we ship an automatic air vent, an air separator, and then there are flush ports inside the unit, and we ship a stainless steel flex tubing for the outdoor unit. So there's not really much you need from a hydronic standpoint other than the actual um, radiant manifolds, fan coils, and so forth. The zone valves are inside that, that indoor module as well. 
uh, that's a, a pretty big deal from a labor and piping standpoint. If we want to do domestic hot water, those zone valves switch from the hydronic heating or cooling over to the tank and back. So we're not messing with uh, three-way valves, uh, lots of piping. If we're looking at backup, we have a choice of either an immersion electric heater for all electric systems, or if it, we have a boiler back backup, we can go with a dual fuel module. And in that case, uh, now we're going to energize the boiler instead of that electric heater. The internal variable speed pump is, is a great feature, very, very low operating costs, and it's uh, communicating with the system as well. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the indoor and the outdoor units communicate. It's via Modbus with just three wire shielded cable. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. The outdoor temperature reset is a huge savings in, in uh, operating costs. There are 15 curves. So based on the outdoor temperature, we can change the minimum and the maximum load temperatures. In other words, the temperature being supplied to the hydronic zones and heating so that we can operate at the lowest temperature possible for the highest COP. When it's very cold outside, it will max out at the, the design set point or when it's in hot water mode, it can go up to 130 degree, 135 degrees Fahrenheit to heat that hot water tank. Uh, if we're looking at uh, using forced air heating or cooling, you want to match the system with an Intertech fan coil. Those fan coils are designed for 120 degree water temperature. So we don't need, um, uh, you know, the boiler 160, 180 degree water temperatures for these fan coils. They're actually designed for the lower water temperatures we get from a heat pump. We offer the zone controls. There are two different types. One is for primarily radiant systems with a fan coil for cooling. And we have another zone panel that is designed primarily for fan coils. If you have a retrofit system that's forced air, you can still get all of your hot water, but you can do the forced air heating and cooling with a fan coil or fan coils. Um, and that has a priority system. So it can actually switch back and forth between heating and cooling depending upon what zones are calling. The startup wizard is, is really a nice touch. Uh, it, we found out on, on some of the early installations, it even checks to make sure your piping is not sized to uh, too small diameter. So if it doesn't have the flow rate needed, it will tell you during that startup, sorry, I can't get the flow rate that the unit needs. And in some cases that might mean upsizing the piping. Hopefully we've looked ahead and uh, everybody's attended the training videos so we know up front what size piping we need, but it does check for that. The boiler backup is a fail-safe type output. So if for some reason the, the internal pump might fail, then all the zone signals get forwarded directly to the boiler. That's a nice touch. Um, you, you never know, anything mechanical has the potential to fail, but uh, hopefully uh, it, it won't. We still have that protected. We'll still have, have heating, uh, even if a, a pump is not operating for some reason. The load shed feature is great for those areas where the dual fuel rates are attractive. In Minnesota, for example, the electric rate might be half the cost with a dual fuel setup. And so the load shed um, is set up where the utility could turn off the unit and we still have a boiler backup for heating. Uh, it also works with interruptible power programs. I sat through a California Energy Council webinar yesterday and there's a lot of discussion on uh, leveling the peaks, doing load shed, managing the uh, demand, but also managing the, uh, the renewable electricity generation. So this is uh, prime for those types of applications or retrofits where maybe they don't have 200 amp service in the home. All of the pressures, temperatures, uh, water temperatures are shown at the control screen. So from a troubleshooting standpoint, you don't have to hook up any gauges. You don't need your thermometers. You can read those right at the screen. And lastly, um, the installation manual is about 100 pages. So it has application drawings, wiring diagrams, uh, quite a lot of information in there. The idea is a complete package. So you have everything you need with those three components, as well as Intertech support for help on, uh, on designing the system. So we can go to the next slide now. And on top of all that, it's super quiet. The way that ECM fan is designed and the really, really large air coil outside, you can see here from the uh, sound waves, even when you're within about six feet from the unit, you just about can't hear that thing. 
there's a chart over on the right that compares those sound levels. And if you look down the scale there, a quiet library is about 30, about 40 dB. So uh, it's like being in a quiet library. The outdoor noise, traffic, whatever the case may be, is probably louder than the unit. So in this case, uh, it's going to be very, it will not be disruptive at all as an outdoor unit compared to a lot of air source heat pumps. Next slide, please. Efficiencies are great. Uh, this slide shows the efficiencies from minus 13, which is where that unit can run down to and then, then shut off all the way up into the 50s. You can see here, uh, if we have three different lines, the blue line would be our typical radiant floor uh, temperatures. They might be lower than that without their temperature reset, but just as a gauge, even at uh, minus 13, our COP is still 2.5. When you're doing domestic hot water heating, the black line, uh, even at that minimum temperature, is still around 1.8 COP. So it's literally twice as efficient, even at the coldest temperatures than an electric water heater. When we get into the uh, higher temperatures, you can see we, we have easily three to four COP and up to five even. So we wanna look at bin data for each location and some slides are coming up later on so you can see that. In most cases in North America, we're gonna be operating in that five degree to 40 degree range. That's where the bulk of our bin hours are. So you can see the COPs are gonna be pretty impressive most of the year. In some areas, uh, we never get that cold even. Uh, next slide, please. Capacities are equally impressive. Uh, we take advantage of that vapor injection and variable speed scroll. So you can see the maximum capacity of this five ton unit. There's also a, a two and a half ton unit is about 55,000 BTUs per hour. As it gets colder outside, you can see even at the minimum temperature, we still have more than half the capacity. That's pretty unusual for an air-to-air -air heat pump. Uh, we typically uh, are, are significantly less capacity, even at zero degrees outside. And likewise, we might be a COP of one at zero, zero degrees outside. So not only is the COP twice that of an air-to-air -air heat pump, but the capacity is significantly higher as well. With the backup heater or the, the backup boiler, then uh, we can pretty easily handle that load even at the very cold temperatures. It'll be really important to use the software. We have the GeoAnalyst software available that we'll be talking about shortly so that we can size it appropriately and uh, look at the best size for that application. Next slide, please. We have four cities that we looked at, and this comes right out of the GeoAnalyst Geo software so that we can compare the various technologies. Uh, this happens to be Syracuse, New York. We used average rates for electric, uh, gas, propane, and oil, just so we could uh, compare how that might work. Really, the big savings with the air-to-water unit is, is what we looked at with capacities and efficiencies. It is a uh, mean heating and a mean hot water machine. Uh, so that's where the numbers really, uh, really come out. You can see here the advantage in Syracuse Annual operating cost is half of an air source heat pump, half of fuel oil, and we don't even want to talk about propane. So if you're looking for electric technologies, uh, the, this is going to be a, a, a nice choice when it comes to operating costs. Uh, the red there is heating, blue is cooling. There's not a lot of cooling in, in Syracuse, and hot water is, is the gray area. So it's definitely the lowest cost compared to these technologies. Uh, the only other electric technology, uh, the 19 sear air source heat pump shown here, is still quite a bit higher than natural gas. Okay, next slide. In Quebec City, uh, electric rates are really cheap. It's, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, electricity in, in uh, the province of Quebec. So th this isn't terribly surprising from an operating cost standpoint. But even versus a 19 CR air source heat pump, you can see it's it's not quite half, but it's it's a good uh, deal less expensive if we're looking at electric technologies. Again, propane and, and fuel oil not not even in the same uh, ballpark. Okay, next slide, please. This is Minneapolis, where gas is extremely cheap at 20-year lows, and uh, electricity is a little bit higher compared to the other areas that we've looked at so far. So if we were looking at only an electric technology, 
our only other choice is that 19 sear air to air heat pump, $1,000 more a year. So uh, this is the only thing that can even come close to competing with natural gas. And um, of course, this is an all-in-one system. So we still have to use natural gas for water heating. We still have to have a separate air conditioner. Uh, so one system does it all uh, with the advantage. It's, it's about the only thing, again, that can come close. Now, I didn't do a dual fuel comparison. There are areas in Minnesota with that dual fuel electric rate um, that, that would change things a little bit, but since we're focusing on electric technologies and comparing apples to apples from city to city to city, I want it to be consistent. Uh, when you um, uh, log into GeoAnalyst and play around with the numbers for your particular application, you can look at those different applications and decide, is it all electric? Is it a boiler backup? Which is the best one for my particular application? Next slide, please. In Seattle, uh, we, it's quite a bit different than Minneapolis uh, from a, a heating and cooling standpoint. So now, again, this looks like the others, Syracuse, uh, Quebec, uh, and so forth, in that uh, this is by far the lowest cost for, of operation versus natural gas, propane, fuel oil, and, and even the 19 sear air source heat pump. Okay, next slide, please. So this is just a quick overview of uh, the GeoAnalyst software, so you can generate your own graphs. You'll have a choice of the heat pump size, what type of heating system do you have, is it radiant floor, fan coils, or both, backup water, your backup heating, your water heater. And so through those choices, you'll be able to create a nice report. Next slide, please. Bin data is what's really most important. This is Syracuse right here. You can see all the way down to minus 13, we only have one hour per year on a 20 year typical uh, weather average here. And if you look at the bulk of the bin hours in that 12 degree to 47 degree range, that's really where our operating is. Uh, the way you read these bin reports, you have your, on the far left, your bin temperatures, those are five degree bins. The next column is bin hours. So those are the average hours per year at each of those bin temperatures. Then there's the building load and the heat pump, heat pump capacity. So it will show a percentage runtime if that unit is not at, uh, if it's not modulating, in other words. So when we're, when you see a percentage, that means it's cycling on and off. When you start to see 100% runtime, that means it's trying to match the load. Being a variable speed compressor, it's going to ramp up, ramp down, try to match the load, and also bring on the, the vapor injection when needed. So it's, in this case, in Syracuse, all the way down to 17 degrees, it's still cycling, which is pretty impressive. When it gets lower than that, uh, colder than that outside, then it starts to load match. And then finally at uh, minus three, it runs out of capacity. So it starts bringing on some backup heat. When it gets all the way to minus 13, that's as cold as it can run, but it doesn't have any bin hours for Syracuse, at least below minus 13. When we look at colder temperatures uh, like Winnipeg, we would see some hours below minus 13. And at that point, uh, we would have to depend on the boiler or the immersion heater for heating. Next slide, please. So this is the typical report uh, based on that input, based on the bin hours. You'll have uh, annual operating costs for heating, cooling, and hot water. And then it echoes your uh, heat loss, heat gain, equipment selection, utility rates, and so forth. Next slide. So how do we do it? Well, the key really is um, the vapor injection. If you look at the operating envelope for the vapor injection scroll versus a typical scroll, you can see we have a much, much larger operating envelope. And what's great about the vapor injection scroll compressor is it can turn on that vapor injection as needed. Uh, and in a lot of cases where the bin hours are not as extreme, it'll operate just like any other scroll compressor, although it does vary speed. Uh, it'll increase, decrease RPM. When we get cold enough, then it needs, actually this sounds counterintuitive, but it needs to cool the compressor. It's designed for high condensing temperatures and low evaporating temperatures. So what that means is it's cold outside and we're heating Domestic hot water, for example, maybe we're running at 135 degree uh, supply temperature. So it is actually cooling the compressor in those conditions. 
what happens is uh, it turns on that vapor injection as it needs it for capacity, or it'll turn it off if it's if it's uh, uh, needing a little bit less capacity at those milder temperatures. So having vapor injection helps that compressor operate at much colder temperatures. It increases our efficiencies at those cold temperatures, and we can still operate as just a normal scroll when it's not turned on and have the ability to increase RPMs uh, based upon the load. Next slide. This is just a uh, quick piping diagram. This is one of the ones that are in the installation manual. And you can see here towards the middle of that diagram, we're showing a hydraulic separator. We don't need a buffer tank if we have an air handler that is around two tons or larger. Um, we can cycle for the smaller radiant zones and then uh, we're saving some costs, but also a lot of space in the mechanical room. So we'll have uh, piping with the internal pump, variable speed pump over to the hydraulic separator. And then our system pump is what provides uh, fluid flow to the radiant zones and or uh, hydronic uh, air handling systems. We have uh, the TurboMax indirect water heater you can see on the right, and we do recommend a backup water heater. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, uh, we'll, we'll have high hot water loads, and we also are using that tank for defrost. So the backup water heater is just a, a nice, uh, inexpensive adder that sort of completes the system. So very simple piping, all of the uh, hydronic components that are internal to the indoor module save a lot of time. And, uh, you know, on, on any hydronic system, that's one of the biggest challenges. In this case, We've got to get over to that hydraulic separator. And from there, the piping is like any other system, really. And so we, we've saved quite a bit of labor in that case. This happens to be the all electric version. If we go to the next slide, the dual fuel setup we're showing in the manual with closely spaced T's connected to a boiler backup. And in this case, we can add some heat to that hydronic side when needed. So this, this would be the dual fuel application. All right, we'll turn it over to. Um, to Tim for this section. Hey, Tim, before you get started, I just wanted to let everyone know that we do see your questions and that we will be answering them at the end. And if you do have uh, questions, please continue putting them on there. Yeah, so certainly, thank you, Carly. But real quick, we just wanted to share a couple of the field installations with you. And you see Trenton, Illinois was one of the locations and then Savannah, Missouri is another location. And uh, it, it's a beautiful unit. Um, and you obviously see that the stand that it sits on, we have two different stands available for snow load. But again, very easy as Jeff said, for the, the installation from the inside module connecting to the outdoor module. So just trying to show you just a couple of examples of, of the equipment actually installed uh, how nicely it is. And on the right hand side, you do see the Turbo Max tank in that uh, upper right hand corner, if you will, just plumbed in with the hydronic air handler. So beautiful setup, nice opportunity, uh, very nice job on the plumbing side. So again, just wanted to share a couple live examples. Sometimes it's hard to get it in your mind as to what it would look like. So beautiful product. Again, we, we thank Neva as well as we thank our design team. Next slide, Carly. Hello there, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Good information, Tim and everybody. Uh, next slide here will show uh, John Pendleton, who's our senior trainer. And uh, John's been in the industry for many years. He's uh, been both out in the field for numerous years, but uh, we're proud to have him here at Entertech for geez, at least five to seven years. I'm not quite sure, but it's a significant amount of time. And John just lends a great deal to this team and we're grateful for that. But uh, his easy manner and his approach make listening to these videos a real treat. Uh, he brings home some really good knowledge uh, we've compiled a 10 unit video library for everyone and at the end of each video you will see a short quiz that will have to be uh, be taken and they're self-paced so you can review them at your own time your own leisure go back if you need but uh, it's imperative that we uh, review the videos take the quiz to purchase the equipment that is a prerequisite and uh, 
I think it'll be beneficial for both parties to do such. And again, the uh, 10 videos, uh, they will be a little bit later on, they will send a link out to the video library. And if you do need any further help, we're always willing to assist and uh, orders can be placed starting February the 1st. So if you need anything further, we're all here, here to help and we certainly do appreciate your time today. Thank you. Next slide. Hey Ed, thank you. I am gonna I am gonna jump in. Being from the sales side, we are taking orders now. Um, but what Ed was referencing is when the equipment would actually be coming out to you upon the completion of your video quiz challenge as well as certification. So again, orders uh, we're accepting those as of today. So thank you very very much. And if I may, just, just allow me to unpack this for you with John Siegenthaler. John Siegenthaler has certainly become a friend of Entertech, a friend of electrification. Um, even all, all of you folks on the East Coast that do an awful lot of boiler work, John is, uh, is probably the, the leading expert as well as mechanical engineer. And his company name is Appropriate Designs. Imagine that. Uh, but we are pleased that John has accepted the opportunity and the challenge as an Entertech sponsored four part webinar series. We're excited about this and, and I hope you are as well. But sometimes I, the, the old saying goes is sometimes you have to slow down to go faster. And we really want people to grab a hold of this technology and understand that the basic need as John has laid out here for us, an overview of modern air to water heat pumps. We're gonna start that and you'll, you'll be seeing invitations coming out for January the 26th, 2021, 9 a.m. Central Time. Super excited about that. And then we're gonna go, that's a Tuesday. So for four consecutive Tuesdays, we're gonna be bringing this to you through John, but it will be an Entertech sponsored event but he brings so much experience with him. John is also the author, for those of you that are in deeply in hydronics, John has authored Modern Hydronics, and he's also authored the book of Heating with Renewable Energy. So if you haven't seen or heard of John Siegenthaler, um, you probably haven't picked up a HVAC or plumbing magazine because he's been authored about 400 times with different articles across this country. So we're so proud that, that John has offered this up as an opportunity with us. So again, very pleased, but I would encourage you to please tune in with us, spend some time with us. We'll also have Jeff Hammond, possibly even Dan Jackson on each of those webinars, just in case there's a little bit more product specific, technical questions related, and myself, I will be on there as well. So thank you again for this opportunity. We appreciate it. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, please feel free to submit them. We will be going through them right now. If everyone wants to turn their cameras back on, I will pass this off to Brian Staley and he will get these questions started. Thanks, Carly. And I uh, wanna say good morning to everyone and thank you all for joining us. This morning, I want to give a quick uh, hand clap to our marketing team and for those on the presentation this morning. I think they've done a great job. Before I get into the questions, I do want to say uh, some of these questions may require some follow up, as you know, for further information and so forth. So, uh, real quick, I'll get into the questions here. Uh, kind of a sidestep. This is a question probably for Dan Jackson, our project uh, manager, from Daniel Leary. He's uh, taking us back to February in Orlando at the show, and he's inquiring on a small air to water heat pump, 12K BTU one ton. Dan, he wants to know when that's gonna be available. Um, uh, the, 12K, the 12KW heat pump is actually the 30, uh, what we call the 0, 030. So uh, that will be available uh, upon release. So we have two different sizes. Um, of a nominally named 30,000 BTU unit and nominally named 60,000 BTU unit, and those uh, correlate to a 12kW and a 20kW. So that'll be available right away. Great. Thanks, Dan. 
Got a question from, from Brian Eiselt. How many of the components are U.S. sourced? And some of these questions will bounce back between Jeff and Dan, I'm sure. Um, U.S. sourced, uh, quite a few actually. Um, and sneaking ahead, I was watching the questions roll in. Uh, so this will uh, touch on another question. Uh, the, the compressor we're using is a Copeland compressor. And it's not uh, only a variable speed compressor, but it is a uh, vapor injected variable speed compressor. So um, that is definitely being sourced here. Although I'm, I do believe Copeland manufactures it uh, in Europe, um, but we'll be bringing that manufacturing to the United States as the as the demand grows. Uh, Intertech has always tried to uh, source as much as possible from the U.S. Uh, almost the entire uh, indoor section is sourced from the U.S. There's uh, most of the components that are not U.S. sourced do come from Europe. Actually, uh, there are a few, um, for instance, the um, the outdoor fan motor is actually uh, from Japan. Uh, a company called Nedec, which also does uh, a lot of business here in the United States, but that particular model they uh, they do they do manufacture that in Japan. Uh, many of the electronics are coming from uh, European suppliers due to the fact that they have a little head they have a little head start on this type of technology. So, and we are also working with our with our parent company Neva, as Steve mentioned earlier. And uh, it was uh, just a, a quicker route to, uh, to use their electronics manufacturers, even though our electronics are unique to Intertech. Uh, it is not something off the shelf that Neva uses and we just adapted. Uh, it runs, there are some physical changes uh, in design of the PCBs and definitely all of the soft, not all, but most of the software and firmware is uh is intertech specific so other than that um all the sheet metal on the outside unit is manufactured in the united states and with the growth in sales of this product we will be bringing more and more of those components stateside as far as the uh, the plastic molded parts and and things like that so the further down the road we get the more we will source from the united states right Thanks, Dan. We've got quite a few questions coming in. And uh, for time's sake, uh, we're, we're gonna try to get through as many as we can before the time runs out for the presentation. And like I said, um, we, marketing will be following up and we'll, we will take these questions and we will answer them to the best that we can and provide as much information as well. So moving on, I got a question here from Jake Marin. Uh, he says, do you have design options to run at higher temperatures up to 100 degrees, 180 degrees Fahrenheit using a boiler to supplement the heat pump during the peak periods. And he's, he states that most buildings have fin and tube baseboards that's going to require uh, higher than 135 degrees Fahrenheit temps during the colder periods. I think Jeff might be able to tackle that one. Certainly, thanks, Brian. Yeah, that's a great question and a good reason to attend uh, John Sigenthaler's um, seminars because uh, he'll get into that in a lot of detail. This heat pump is limited to 135 degree leaving water temperature. So we have a, a couple of choices. We could uh, go with uh, different uh, emitters, you know, with uh, low temperature emitters, double stack uh, baseboard or, or something to that effect, or some really nice uh, designed um, uh, radiating uh, uh, devices, or we can go the backup boiler uh, route. So, so you can go either way but uh, the heat pump is limited to 135 degrees. And, and John will get into a lot of those details uh, on his webinars coming up. We also have some drawings in the IOM that show boiler backup uh, piping. Great, thanks Jeff. Got a few questions here asking about the presentation. Mark and we'll be following up with the link to the presentation for you guys to view at a later date. So um, you should be looking for that later this afternoon if I'm correct, right Carly? Okay. I've got a question for Jeff. Uh, what is Jeff using for heat loss gain for his comparison of operating cost? That, that's a good question. Yeah, we used a uh, an 1800 square foot home in each of those areas. 
And so these are estimated heat loss, heat gain, but uh, if you're doing a manual J uh, or F280 calculation, you can add that heat loss, heat gain right into GeoAnalyst and that will provide the operating costs as well as the uh, kilowatt hours, uh, gallons of propane, what have you. All right, great. Uh, Rob Dorson asked, I noticed there was auxiliary heat consumption throughout the heating vent temperature ranges. What does this actually represent? Great question, yeah. Defrost uh, is, is uh, represented by those kilowatt hour usage uh, in the 42 degree range and, and lower. And that's because uh, when the unit's in defrost, we have to make up for the heating in, in some other means. So, uh, so we do have some electric or uh, boiler operation in those cases. Great. Got a question from Jake Marin for, uh, this might go to Tim actually. Uh, do you sell product through any distribution channels, particularly in the Northeast, or do we sell direct only? Yeah, that's, that's a fantastic question. So we truly believe that this new air to water, this Advantage product will bring new distribution opportunities. So I, I welcome you to please reach out to us. Uh, it will go through some of our dealer direct opportunity channels in New York, for example dealers that are already installing our geothermal products as well as solar pv uh, they'll have access to that through entertech but we're also certainly looking for distribution opportunities so we welcome that so again please reach out thank you all right got some questions here about tech literature and pricing marketing is going to be releasing some information uh, about all the all the literature that's going to be involved yeah, the installation manual, the submittal, and the price books are all going to be referenced and where you can locate those out on our um, our branded websites or support site, wherever they may be located. So keep an eye out for some follow-ups from marketing because they're going to have some valuable information for all you guys. Brian, I'm going to jump in sure. really quick. Just uh, do keep in mind that this is an Entertech branded product. So um, that's, you know, one new and additional exciting thing about this product is that it actually is branded as Entertech. So, you know, in the past, if you are a Hydron or GeoComfort customer, there is some, some data available on those sites. But um, actually, if you head to the Entertech website, that's where you'll find all that you need to know about the Advantage system. So just kind of keep that in mind as you uh, guys, you know, search out that information. And like Brian said, we'll be sending everything out. Um, but that's something to just uh, kind of keep in the back of your mind. Great. Thanks, Mallory. Question for uh, Jeff or Dan, uh, one size turbo max for both the two and a half and five ton? Well, there are two sizes available. There's a 45 gallon and a 65 gallon, and that's available for either the uh, 030 or the 060. There is only one indoor module for both units. So you'll you'll pair, the outdoor unit, the indoor module, and either a 45 or a 65 gallon water heater. All right. Another very important question, Jeff or Dan, have the units been rated for AHRI or NEEP? You knew that one was coming. Dan, do you want to take that or do you want me to? Yeah, uh, yeah I'm sorry, Brian, could you repeat that? Yeah, uh, have the units been rated for AHRI or NEEP? Oh, uh, no, we have not done any rating uh, as of yet. There, uh, we did check with AHRI and, and we would have rated it uh, with AHRI, but um, there is not a section or sector in AHRI that fits this, uh, this type of product. Um, you can rate it. Uh, I believe under the chill uh, under the chiller sector, but there is no heating rating and being a heat dominant unit uh, as of yet there really isn't. Um, there really is a section under under HRI. So um, as soon as there will be, uh, or as soon as there would be a uh, a box that that fits in, we will definitely we will definitely rate it there. Thanks, Dan. Are we aware, uh, John Sands is asking, are we aware of any issues installing on and off grid battery systems? 
I, I can take that one. I, I'm not aware of any. Uh, this is a great product for net zero because uh, we can go all electric and uh, and then we will optimize our, our modules and uh, battery storage accordingly. So that's uh, one of the nice uh, features with this product with that internal 9 kW heater. Uh, we, we can help you design your solar package and uh, select the inverter and the uh, battery storage that makes the most sense. You, you, may, you, could, you can choose depending upon the utility program or how you want to handle your um, amount of storage. Certainly, you know, it can be complete net zero. You might want to just offset uh, certain peak demand rates. You might want to have, you know, storage for nighttime use. So there are many, many different ways we can, we can operate with uh, this product and solar slash battery storage. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Got some questions about the vapor injection, or one specifically from Michael Simpson. Can we direct uh, him to a website to learn more about vapor injection? And I'm sure Tim and Jeff can explain more. I believe our training is going to have some information about vapor inject injection specifically, if, if I'm correct. That is correct. Uh, at one of the 10 videos that will be online at Intertech University will cover vapor injection. But Copeland also has some nice materials online, and that's a good place to learn about it. I, I would start with the uh, Intertech University videos. You can certainly contact technical support, and we're happy to help out. Uh, it, it's, it's really an interesting technology. Once you look at the installation manual, there are some uh, refrigerant diagrams in there, and you can see what happens when with those various um, uh, operating modes. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good information online. I, I would start with the Intertech University and, and then uh, go from there. Great, thanks Jeff. Uh, just a couple more questions. We're running pretty short on time here. Uh, question for Jeff, can this be used with radiant floor and with air handlers? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we would pick uh, a control, a zone control that would allow us to do that. So we would have our outdoor temperature reset curve for radiant floor. And then when, the, when there's an air handler call, we would default to the 120 degree Fahrenheit temperature for our uh, fan coil. So we can use that fan coil in a couple different ways. It can be an auxiliary source. Uh, it can be used in the spring and the fall when we have our radiant floor system uh, not operating, uh, or it can be used for just cooling. So we, we definitely can do that. Great. One last question, then I'll turn it back over to Carly. Does radiant floor temperature change with the outdoor temperature? It does, and that's built in. So there's an outdoor temperature sensor already installed at the outdoor unit. The indoor module looks at uh, that outdoor temperature, and it looks at the, um, the settings. You set your minimum and maximum temperatures on the, the indoor touchscreen, color touchscreen. And based upon your selection of, uh, you know, your 15 different curves, it's going to change the, the temperature delivered to the radiant floor based upon the outdoor temperature. It still uses a, a fixed temperature for domestic hot water and a fixed temperature for fan coils, but anytime there's a radiant zone call, then it uses the outdoor temperature reset. If you have that turned on, you certainly can turn it off. Uh, maybe, maybe you have a staple up radiant or something like that where you don't, you don't want to lower the temperature. But in most cases, you will want to use that outdoor temperature reset, and that's built into the indoor module. Great. All right. Well, for time's sake, we're going to go ahead and turn it back over to Carly. And any questions that were not answered, do, do apologize for that. Uh, we had quite a few come in all at once, and uh, I know everyone's interested in what's going on with the product. And uh, like I said, we will try to follow up with some further information on these particular questions. So once again, thank you all for joining us. Thanks, you know, big support and big hand clap to the team uh, for the great presentation. I'm going to turn it back over to Carly. Hey, everyone. So um, this will be sent to you via email. You will get the webinar recording as well as the presentation slides. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email them in. Um, and the email will have all of your links, all of your handouts, anything that you guys would need. And then, um, like Brian said, we will reach out directly to you for the for some of the bigger questions that we did not get to. So with that being said, um, Tim, Steve, Dan, Jeff, do you guys have anything else you wanted to add? Carly, I'll just jump in. Just to want to thank again everybody for taking time today to spend time with us to learn about this product. 
learn a little bit more about Entertech and our culture. And hopefully you've seen through this hour and a half, just our, our willingness to help you from the design process all the way through installation to make sure that you have satisfied customers. So thank you, challenge you to, to strongly consider John Siegenthaler's upcoming series. And then obviously imperatively to, to join in on the Entertech videos and make sure you've got your certification before we can allow equipment to go out the door. So very excited. A lot of distributors also, Entertech distributors want to handle this product and we'll be seeing their orders soon as well. So again, thank you. Merry Christmas and a very happy new year. Thank you. Yeah, th thanks everybody. We appreciate it. And again, this is a, a new chapter for Entertech. As I mentioned earlier, we're broadening our offering. We're, you know, we're, we're not changing our, our path from geothermal, you know, from geothermal or water source. We've just added to our passion. So uh, we're excited about this product and we can't wait to get it out to you. So again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Okay, with that being said, we are going we are going to go ahead and end the presentation. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Carly. Thanks, Carly. Bye-bye.